What is going on everybody? Welcome to another video and in this video we are going to ask and answer one simple question. Do vitamin C supplements strengthen our immune system? Because this is actually the most popular supplement when it comes to cold prevention and I see a lot a lot of people taking it but at the same time vitamin C is one of the most abundant vitamins in the world like Almost every vegetable and fruit is high in vitamin C. So why are people taking supplements of vitamin C? So let's go through the basics first. What is vitamin C? Vitamin C, also known as L-ascorbic acid, is a water-soluble vitamin that is naturally present in, in a lot of plant foods. Humans, unlike most animals, are unable to synthesize vitamin C endogenously, so it is an essential dietary component. Vitamin C is important for collagen synthesis, L-carnitine and certain neurotransmitters. It is also involved in protein metabolism. Furthermore, it actually increases the absorption of non-heme iron, which is plant iron. But the most well-known effect of vitamin C is actually their antioxidant potential and the potential effect on the immune system. So before we get into the vitamin C strengthen our immune system, we need to make a distinction here uh, between vitamin C supplements and vitamin C in foods. Are they actually the same? And the answer is obviously not. Now, when it comes to bioavailability or absorption, they actually seem to be about the same. But when it comes to strengthening our immune system, well, then foods are really, really better. And the reason why is very simple. When you eat an orange, you get tons and tons and tons of other vitamins, uh, of other phytonutrients that are really healthy, antioxidant, and overall will give you more health than a simple pill of one vitamin, obviously. So if you have to choose, just go for the food. So pretty much all the studies on vitamin C and colds show that taking vitamin C will not prevent colds, okay? So that's out of the window. But it may help you recover a little bit faster from a cold. The most convincing evidence to date comes from a 2013 review of 29 randomized controlled trials with more than 11 thousand participants. Researchers found that among extremely active people such as marathon runners, skiers and army troops doing heavy exercise in subarctic conditions, taking at least 200 mg of vitamin C every day appeared to cut the risk of getting, of getting a cold in half. But for the general population, taking daily vitamin C did not reduce the risk of getting a cold. More encouraging, taking at least 200 mg of vitamin C per day did appear to reduce the duration of cold symptoms by an average of 8% in adults and 14% in children, which translated to about one less day of illness. So as you can see, for the general population it doesn't seem to have any benefit, but for those that are extremely, extremely active, active, maybe there's a benefit there. And that's because they need more vitamin C and maybe they weren't getting it through their diet. The more you exercise, uh, the more antioxidants you're gonna need. So you're gonna need to eat higher doses of antioxidant vitamins like vitamin C. And maybe that's the reason why vitamin C appears to be effective in preventing colds in these people. And it's just 200 milligrams of vitamin C. That's very, very little as we, as we are going to see uh, at the end. But what really surprised me here is that vitamin C will make you recover faster from a cold. I had no idea. Uh, and it's not a lot, 8% in adults and 14% in children, but that's better than nothing, I guess. A 2019 review found in 12 intervention trials that vitamin C reduced the length of ICU stay on average by 7.8%. In six trials, orally admi administered vitamin C in doses of 1 to 3 grams a day reduced the length of ICU stay by 8.6%. 
in three trials uh, in which patients needed mechanical ventilation for over 24 hours vitamin C shortened the duration of mechanical ventilation by 18 percent so this might be the most important part of this video taking one to three grams of vitamin C uh, reduce the time of stay in the intensive care units and the time of need for mechanical ventilation and this is actually extremely important for the times that we are living right now where our health systems are overwhelmed and we need to get people out of the ICUs and out of ventilation as fast as possible and for an individual it might not make, not make a big difference 8% or 18% won't make a big difference but for a whole country that can be the difference between saving lots of life or letting a lot of people die so as you can see vitamin C supplements do not prevent colds they may help with a faster recovery slightly faster and they may be helpful for those who are extremely extremely active and don't get enough vitamin C uh, now there is a catch uh, the recovery period the recovery period is only faster if the person was already intaking a lot of vitamin C before getting sick if you take vitamin C after getting sick or eat a lot of vitamin C high foods after getting sick it doesn't seem to have any benefit so moral of the story just have a healthy diet always now I want to take a small look at the relationship between vitamin C consumption and the novel coronavirus COVID-19 uh, because there's been a lot of talk about vitamin C to help with COVID-19 but does it actually help? Well a Chinese report from a couple of months ago suggested that patients should take 15 to 100 milligrams of vitamin C per kilo a day to help with COVID-19 induced pneumonia. That's pretty much all the evidence that we have is a group of experts of Chinese experts came together and just said well we should give vitamin C to people in intensive care and that's just it uh, there's actually one trial uh, that is gonna start right now to investigate further the, the effects but uh, we, we don't have the results for it so when they come out maybe I'll share them with you so the daily recommended dose for a male adult is 90 milligrams, for a female is 75 milligrams. Also, smokers require 35 milligrams more on top of the recommended dose. For the best sources, well, the best source of vitamin C is actually not oranges, is red bell peppers. This is the best vitamin C uh, source you can get a little bit of red bell pepper and hit your vitamin C intake very very easily. Then you have oranges, kiwis, uh, broccoli, kale, uh, pretty much every single veggie is high uh, in vitamin C. And this is why I think taking vitamin C supplements is like throwing money in the trash. Uh, because vitamin C is so abundant and you will not get a higher uh, blood level of vitamin C uh, with supplements uh, anyway. So just eat a lot of healthy food, just eat a lot of vegetables and fruits. I actually, I actually went to Chronometer, which is the app that, where I track my macros and micros and all of that. You can sign up for the app down below in the link and it's free. And I added one orange, one banana, 100 grams of broccoli and 100 grams of kale. I eat way way more than this every day and you should eat more vegetables and fruits than this, okay? And just with these things, which is not a lot, I was able to get 336% of the daily recommended dose of vitamin C, about 300 milligrams instead of the recommended 90. So as you can see, uh, it's very, very easy to get all the vitamin C in and maybe my body didn't even absorb all of this vitamin C. So that's it for the video guys, hopefully you enjoyed it, it was a lot, a lot of work. Uh, so subscribe to the channel and leave a like and leave a comment to support the channel and I'm gonna see you all in the next video. Peace.